What does our study show? Figure 32 shows the way that polyarchy in some of the jurisdictions we looked at changes in response to other jurisdictions' polyarchy. Namely, we see that the correlations between Australia and Austria, Austria-Canada, Canada-the UK, Austria-the US, and so forth, we see very large correlations between all these jurisdictions' polyarchies. So it's clear that in a bit more than half of all the correlations that we looked at, after controlling for the effects of macroeconomic and other variables, that polyarctic changes in one jurisdiction, they spread or they seem to influence the extent of polyarchy in other jurisdictions' political institutions. Only in one case did we see a negative correlation. Illustrating the extent to which this polyarchy seems to spread through the network, figure 34 shows the extent to which polyarchy changes in one jurisdiction versus the next in repeats of our study. The problem with traditional econometrics is that the researcher might take some figures, run the analysis, and just show the results, not taking into account the natural variability in their data. We used a technique known as Bayesian analysis. In this analysis, we take into account the natural variability of polyarchy and the natural variability of our other variables in order to simulate almost different dimensions, different worlds in which this polyarchy might have changed. By looking at these different dimensions, by running these multiple simulations over time, we get a far more accurate view of how polyarchy spread in these jurisdictions than if we simply looked at our data one time. So if we see in the first simulation that the U.S. had relatively low weighted degree, in other words, the U.S.'s centrality had been relatively low just looking at the data, we see that the U.S.'s centrality, when considering this notion of Eigen centrality, or taking into account the fact that the U.K.'s financial institutions will affect the Netherlands' financial institutions, which will affect Sweden's financial institutions, and when we take all this run-through of international financial centers, we see that the U.S.'s centrality in this overall network looks far bigger than it would if we simply looked at the weighted degree. The second simulation shows much greater similarity between the simple obvious weighted degree of the U.S.'s polyarchy and its polyarchy after considering this whole Eigen centrality procedure. And as we go through all the 1,000 simulations that our algorithm required of our data, we could paint a general picture of the way that polyarchy in one jurisdiction changed in response to another jurisdiction's polyarchy. Figure 35 shows the way that polyarchy changes in responses to other jurisdictions' financial centrality in the international financial network. And what figure 35 does specifically is look at something called a Bayesian conditional distribution. And all that means is it says, look, let's break up all jurisdiction centrality according to the most central ones and the least central ones. Of all those centralities, what do we know about polyarchy at that time? And according to this analysis, we see that for jurisdictions that were not very central at all, had increasing amounts of polyarchy. We saw that polyarchy was not rising very fast at all in these very central jurisdictions. Whether we look at the way polyarchy is changing for these jurisdictions over time, or whether we scale this polyarchy according to how big the financial center is in the first place, the obvious conclusion still remains. Polyarchy goes up the fastest for jurisdictions that are just not very central. To flip that conclusion on its head, we can say that very central financial centers do not have political institutions where polyarchy is rising very quickly. And notice how careful I am to talk about the change in polyarchy, about polyarchy rising or falling, because in this figure we're looking at the change in this polyarchy, not the level. So from figure 35, we might conclude that polyarchy and thus democracy is bad for an international financial center. Where we see polyarchy helping a jurisdiction centrality is when polyarchy responds to an international financial center's own centrality. Namely, in figure 36, we show how, in various jurisdictions, its own polyarchy changed as its centrality rose.
for a lot of jurisdictions, as that jurisdiction got bigger, as it became more central, that polyarchy rose in response. Now, why do I say in response? Figure 31 shows a type of analysis known as spectral analysis. I won't go into the details of this analysis here other than to say that using complicated statistical procedures such as Fourier analysis, such as wave analysis, we're actually able to look at causality between polyarchy and this eigencentrality almost unequivocally that polyarchy is the response of the eigencentrality and not the other way around. Remember we talked about polyarchy changing over time in response to a financial center centrality. Now in this dynamic view of polyarchy we're going to expect some countries to be becoming more polyarctic and some countries to become less polyarctic over any particular snapshot that we take. And figure 37 shows one of those snapshots for the 10 years that we looked at. Namely, the figure shows the increase in polyarchy for the first three years of the decade we looked at and the change in that last three years for the decade that we looked at. For some countries like Sweden, Ireland, Denmark, and the Netherlands, polyarchy rose in response to these jurisdictions' own eigencentrality. Whereas in, in places like France and the UK, polyarchy continued to fall or increasingly fell as these jurisdictions became more central. So we don't want to give the impression that all jurisdictions polyarchy rises as they become bigger and more central, but we want to give a dynamic view where jurisdictions are becoming more democratic, more autocratic over time, and that this democracy or autocracy is changing in response to this overall configuration of eigencentrality in the international financial network. Not only with this jurisdiction's own eigencentrality, but also with its trading partners eigencentrality. Thus, as a result of these data, we see a clear transition path for a set of incentives in the international financial network. We do actually see some jurisdictions polyarchy rising as a method of helping their financial centers become more competitive, yet particularly for highly developed financial centers, this polyarchy to be increasing over time as they seek to remain competitive in this international configuration. Thus showing that polyarchy responds to a jurisdiction's eigencentrality and that that dynamic response depends on its competitiveness and on polyarchy in those other jurisdictions. The best way to tweak political institutions in a place like London or Hong Kong is not simply to say, well, we need more democracy, we need more polyarchy, uh, we need to increase autocracy but instead to look at where the competitiveness of that jurisdiction is vis-a-vis -vis its peers and rivals, and then to decide whether political institutions need to be reined in in order to pursue a more coherent financial policy, or to be extended in order to pay off those groups for their patience, to seek innovation, and to promote overall cooperation with the financial center. This has been another Infographic Instant with Brian Michael.